Five, three, two, one, release, release, release. Fire, fire. <laughs> On July 11th of 2021, Virgin Galactic completed their passenger flight test of the vehicle Unity, sending four passengers and two pilots on a suborbital flight to space, one of which included Sir Richard Branson. In this video, we will discuss a basic overview of the flight, what this means for the future of commercial space tourism, and their race with the company Blue Origin. So let's talk about that. Welcome back to all you space enthusiasts, and if you're new to the channel, then I hope you learned something from this video. The main idea is we're going to be talking about Virgin Galactic, their most recent event, and what this means for the future of commercial spaceflight, and what else might be going on in the industry. Now, before I get started, I want to briefly mention something about the boundary of space. Now, it's somewhat arguable whether or not Virgin Galactic actually reached space because of the definition of the Kármán line and the national definition within the United States of how you become an astronaut. But to learn more about this, the details, and why it's hard to define the boundary of space, I recommend watching this video, where I go into much more detail on how we define the edge of space. Nonetheless, let's go ahead and talk about the recent event that Virgin Galactic has completed. The Virgin Galactic experience includes a suborbital flight on a space plane named Unity. Now, Unity is dropped from the mothership Eve, it ignites the rocket engine to send the space plane to an altitude in which they've become astronauts. Now for this specific flight, it reached approximately 86 kilometers above sea level. Now the crew has a couple of minutes in weightlessness before they have to strap back into their seats and descend back to the spaceport. Now if you'd like to learn more about the details of the flight, then I'd recommend watching this video, where I go into a much further discussion about the ascent and descent of the entire process. Now recall, this is a suborbital flight. And for those of you that might not be familiar with space flight, a suborbital flight is fairly short. Again, it's just a few minutes in weightlessness. Whereas compared to the space shuttle, the International Space Station, or most if not a majority of satellites that go into space, they last in orbit for typically many days, months, or even years. Whereas for a suborbital flight, it's mostly a matter of minutes. Therefore, this is fairly a quick up to space and then come back down, rather than maybe a six or seven month trip to the International Space Station. Now, before we get into the purpose of this flight or why it's pretty important, we still need to recognize that it is a flight test, meaning that everyone on board the vehicle was in fact an employee or representative of Virgin Galactic. They were not paying customers to go on this flight. So that's important to keep in mind. So this raises the question, of why is this suborbital flight so important? Now, from looking at a larger scale of space exploration, it might not be comparable in the scientific outcomes of, per se, a rover landing on Mars or maybe missions to the moon, but rather it's an improvement in the commercial spaceflight industry. Let's put this into perspective. The company Virgin Galactic was founded in the year 2004, so roughly 17 years ago. And for over the last decade, commercial spaceflight has been essentially two years away. So space tourism is something that would always be, oh, just a couple years down the road. Therefore, seeing a commercial flight test be successful and show such improvement in the design is starting to show some more optimism to the future of space tourism. And from an interview with the company, it's estimated that the first commercial flights with paying customers are going to take place in 2022. So although it might not be later this year, it's expected to be in the near future. Nonetheless, how much do these cost and is it actually feasible for a lot of people to do this? Now, although the current price tag for a seat is unknown, back in 2013, roughly 700 customers bought seats ranging in prices from $200,000 to $250,000. Now, it's uncertain whether or not this will remain around this value as a recent auction from Blue Origin sold a ticket for $28 million. So it's estimated that maybe for the first few years, the price tag may bump up. However, in the long run, hopefully those values will continue to decrease. Nonetheless, let's recognize the six people that were on board Unity for this flight. 
There were the two pilots being Dave McKay and Michael Masucci, and four passengers being Beth Moses, Colin Bennett, Sarisha Bandla, and Sir Richard Branson. Now this being the first space flight for Colin, Sarisha, and Branson, whereas Beth Moses and the two pilots have previously flown to space before. Now this event has gotten a lot of attention as being the space race for billionaires. But why would that be the case? Well, there's a company called Blue Origin, which is founded by Jeff Bezos, also the founder of the company Amazon. Now, Blue Origin has a very different approach. They are using the rocket called New Shepard to send a space capsule onto a suborbital flight, which is different than sending a space plane. Therefore, the experiences aren't necessarily the same. However, the ultimate end goal is to send people on suborbital flights into space. So why is this so important? Well, a couple months ago, Jeff Bezos announced that they would fly their first crewed New Shepard launch on July 20th, and Jeff Bezos would be on board. And after this announcement, Richard Branson announced that he would be flying on Virgin Galactic's flight on July 11th, which has just recently happened. Therefore, many of this are considering just to be a race between two billionaires and their own spaceships, and not really leading to anything else. But I want to mention that commercial spaceflight isn't just for billionaires, or at least space tourism isn't. So let's put this into perspective just a little bit. And a lot of these numbers surprised me when I first looked at them. The numbers that surprised me were the amount of people that actually have the type of money to be able to do something like this. Now let me first mention that hearing numbers like $200,000 or $250,000 for a few minutes in weightlessness, that's equivalent to a lot of people's entire houses or livelihood. How can you pay that much money just for a one-time trip to space? However, when you start to recognize how many people have that kind of money, it seems to see a little bit more realistic that this entire industry exists. For example, it's estimated that approximately 600 people in the United States are billionaires, and this is as of 2020. And then if we lower it to looking at all the millionaires in the United States, it's estimated that there are over 20 million millionaires. Now, if we raise the threshold just a little bit, Maybe how many people are there with over $10 million? And it's estimated that it's over one and a half million people. So let's say for example, that 1% of people that have over $10 million wanna fly to space. You're still looking at 15,000 customers. And on space planes or space capsules, which can only hold a handful of people, you're looking at thousands of flights. Therefore, there is definitely an industry for space tourism. And although right now and in the near term, it's going to be very expensive and even has been for past space tourists, I hope that as the vehicles progress, as there are more vehicles added to the fleet and different locations to launch from, then maybe the price can become lower and lower to be more realistic to the everyday person. And maybe if that's not the case, then at least more people will be able to experience what it's like to see Earth from outer space. Now, one way for an everyday person to go to space is to win a lottery or to get very lucky in a giveaway. So Virgin Galactic announced that they will be giving away two tickets on some of the early commercial flights. And I've included the link in the description below if you wanna learn more about how you might be able to win a flight to space. It also wouldn't be fair to not mention SpaceX. Now, the Inspiration4 mission is coming up within the next two months, which will be sending four civilians to space. Now, this mission was primarily funded by a billionaire because seats on Crew Dragon as of right now are still in the tens of millions of dollars. Therefore, it might not be realistic for the millions of millionaires, but is realistic for the thousand or so billionaires. So commercial spaceflight is definitely growing at a very rapid pace and I'm excited to see where everything goes over the next couple years or so. Now, I should also briefly mention Starship. If Starship is truly as reusable as planned, as safe as they expect it to be, and meet all the criteria, then I wouldn't be surprised to see many people going up in a Starship. However, that's something that will ultimately have to be seen as time progresses and as the vehicle is developed. So maybe in the next 10 years or so, we can see how that changes the industry. But for the time being, 
vehicles like Spaceship Two or Unity or New Shepard are truly going to be the vehicles that send the first collection of people on suborbital flights to space, or at least the first collection of paying customers. The last thing that I want to say is congratulations to Virgin Galactic and the teams at Scaled Composites, the spaceship company, and many other companies that have been able to help the development of this vehicle. Now, I should also mention that this really is just the beginning. There is so much more that needs to be done, including reusability, reliability, and growing the fleet in order to meet the high demands of commercial spaceflight. Nonetheless, we'll just have to wait and see how the future progresses for these companies, including Virgin Galactic and Blue Origin. But with all that being said, if you have any questions about the event, Virgin Galactic, or about space in general, let me know in the comments below. If you enjoyed this video, please consider leaving a like and subscribing to this channel. But thank you for watching, and I hope to see you in the next one.